This is a story of South Africa in the early days of the diamond fields. It's a story of the diggers who came to try their luck by the Fowl River. And most of all, it's the story of one particular Englishman, Stafford Parker, whose strength and character made him the acknowledged boss of the diamond community of Hopetown. <laughs> We have a city on a rock, so must we build our lives to enable us to overcome worldly temptation. Where have you been? With my uncle, Jan Blum. Stafford Parker was there. He tried to persuade my uncle to give him sole concession of the diamond fields. Has there been another find? No. <laughs> and my uncle would promise nothing. And why should I worry? Jan Blum thinks a great deal of Stafford Parker. He'll get that concession unless you... Unless I pay good money for what may be empty ground, huh? Where one diamond is found, others will be. Wait till they are. Then my money will talk. Then it may be too late. My friend, think while it is yet done. And ask yourself, to whom can I turn, if not to God? To whom can I look for aid, if not to God? Human hopes are vain, my friends, and human strength, illusion. In God only is strength, so give yourselves to God. Let his truth be your shield Thank and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. His message. Oh, I'm message sorry. of hope. Let me pick them up. Promise Please. Salvation. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I think that was all. And uh, that's my fine for being so careless. Oh, but that's too generous. my brothers and sisters. Why haven't I seen you before? Oh, we don't belong here. My father and I are touring the country collecting for the mission. Getting about's no good to a girl like you. You should stay in one place. This one. Well, goodbye. I hope we meet again. You shouldn't waste time on trash like him, Dora. You shut up. Hello there. How's the only girl I ever loved? Waiting to share a bottle with you. And here it is. Thanks very much. I'll pour the next one myself. You're pretty manners, Muller. Suppose I'll have to go around. I can think of no other way. I can. Thanks. Mind if I help myself this time? More peace. Quit shooting or I'll blow a pint of nails through you. It's all right, Ma. They were just turkey cocking. They were only having a bit of fun, Ma. That's all. Why, Mr. Miller wouldn't shoot a dog. Of course not. I would tear him in half with my hands. No, oh, it's always the same with you in the bar. One day that big gorilla's gonna hurt you. Well, it'll save you the trouble of shying bottles at me. <laughs> I like to do worse than that sometimes, making up to a missionary kid. Well, you've got to be civil to a stranger. I suppose you can't help yourself. You've just got to be boss. I wasn't boss with Jan Blum today. I know. I heard Pete Queeman telling Muller about it. I can't think why you're so set on getting that concession. Well, I promised you the first time that I found, didn't I? It won't cost you much. Nothing's been found in two years. No, but plenty will be. I never set much store on guessing. Mine's something surer than a guess. Dora, did you ever see old Jackson, the water diviner, at work? Yes. It was sort of queer the way that hazel twig would kick in his hands when he came near water. Yeah. Well, I'm the same way with diamonds. I'd stake all I've got that somewhere along the banks of the River Val, there's the biggest buried treasure this world has ever seen.
Dogs, the winner! <laughs> Whiskey, Ma. Couple of plucky lads, sir. Never saw a cleaner fight. No, they're pretty good. Like a drink? Oh, thanks. A uh, soft one. Small emulations, General Ma. Here's luck. Cheers. You're a stranger here, aren't you? Just come in on the mail cart. From Scotland, I take it? Yes, originally. Come by way of California. Ah, that's a great country. Aren't you, right? I was in the gold fields in 49. You must be Stafford Parker, the chap in charge around here. Well, you might put it like that. I'm the agent, the native chief that owns the territory. Proud to know you, sir. The next fight! Your name's still quite a legend back there. Come uh -huh. Yeah, come on, boys. Yeah, come on. Well, you're on next. Come on. Oh, come on. This is no way to start a flight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my regretful task to call off the present badge on account of the two men are too drunk to stand. <laughs> In consequence, the final contest, having been cancelled, it, uh, <laughs> it won't take place. <laughs> That's ending tonight's program. <laughs> if you want another fight, I will give you one. What, me? Any commas? No? Perhaps Mr. Parker will oblige. No. I'll have no private feuds in my house. Don't. He's trying to trap you into something. Well. Well, there's nothing I'd like better. Fifty pounds aside, side, huh? Hundred and fifty, if you like. Why not? It will be Aunt Bloom's money you will lose. Well, at least I didn't make it trading rum to the natives. Ah. What is it? From Brandy Bill. Excuse me a minute, I have some urgent business. I'll be right back. I wouldn't count on that. Where I've just come from, Mr. Parker made quite a reputation with his fists. You'll get your fight and regret it. What is it, Brandy? I'm busy. You'll be busier still when you hear this. One of the boys has found a shiner. Are you sure of that? Of course I'm sure. I've seen it. Ooh, ooh, what a dazzler. The biggest diamond you ever did see. Who turned it up? Van Niekirk. Is he coming into town? He is, and all the boys with him. So if you want that concession from Jeanne Bloom, you better get going before everybody hears the news. Yeah, but I'm busy now. I've got an argument to settle inside with Muller. But they're on the road, I tell you. And if you don't go now, you'll be just one in a blooming auction. You can fix Muller any time. Yeah, you're right, Brandy. I can. All right. Listen, lie low until the news breaks. Then tell Dora why I ran out on the fight. OK, Cap. I'll tell her. Come on. Someone's in a hurry. It's Parker. Yellow. Parker's no quitter. If he's run out on this fight, he's got a darn good reason for it. You talk too much. Talking isn't all I can do. I don't fight with babies.
About ten carats, I'd say, wouldn't you, Maxie? Mm -hmm. Oh, about that. Where did you find it? Cliff Drift. I'm going there in the morning. Me too. Isn't that a beauty, Ma? Ooh. Mind having it myself? What's it worth, is it? It's worth trekking to Cliff Drift to see if he's got any big brothers. <laughs> This is right. It's going to be all aboard for clip lift in the morning. What about you, Rogers? Are you going to clip lift? What do you think? I trust old Rogers to be on the spot. Are you moving too, Maxie? There won't be a soul left in Hope Town this time tomorrow. Was it on British territory you found this? No. All the country north of the river belongs to the Boers. It belongs to neither. It's no man's land. It belongs to my uncle, young Blomp. Oh? A black uncle or a white one? <laughs> <laughs> My uncle is chief of the Greek was. <laughs> <laughs> That one's mine. You have no time to drink. He takes his money to Jan Blum and buy me that concession. He may not be ready to sell when he knows what's been found. He will not know. Only I need you to tell him. Stafford Parker, running like a frightened schoolgirl for what they mean millions. Seen Brandy Bill about. Not like him to miss a booze up. Oh, he's sure to be here somewhere. So he's broke the state of the art. He left his head about Marcus Dunnus, come. Sleep. It's all right, he's asleep. Here, oh, it's you, Mr. Muller. That's funny, I was dreaming of elephants. Where is Stafford Parker? How should I know? Must be over a week since I saw him last. It's ten minutes since you saw him, and you told him about that diamond. Diamond? Old Van Niekerk, you mean? Yeah. Bit of glass, if you ask me. Good night. <laughs> Give him the money and get something in writing. Why don't you go and make him the offer yourself? I do not keep a dog and do my own bath. News of this find gets abroad, they'll flock into Clip Drift from all over the world. You'll need a man like me to keep law and order. Maybe. But you ask me to hand over full control of these fields in return for what? Loyal service and wealth beyond your wildest dreams. I'd be rich if I controlled them myself. You couldn't do it, Yanko. White men take orders from white. Otherwise, the British or the Boers will step in and you'll lose everything. Of all the agents I ever had, you are the only one who treated me honestly. Give me this concession and you'll never regret it. Uncle. You haven't let him have it. What is it to you what I do with my own property? Herr Müller offers you this money. And more besides, Uncle. For the sole concession. Herr Müller must be a rich man. He is from selling rock gut rum to your people. Why has this offer been made in the middle of the night? Because they're... Why, your interest, Uncle, to stop you making the mistake of letting him have it. I see. There was no other reason? None. Why should there be? I thought perhaps a diamond had been found. We heard nothing of any diamond, Uncle. Then Mr. Parker told me a lie. All right, even me for diamonds. Return this money to Herr Miller. I do not deal with cheats. Mr. Parker gets the concession. You'll be sorry, Uncle. Go. And if you want to dig on my fields, the fee for a claim is ten shillings. The only digging I'll do for you will be grave digging. The biggest night we ever had, Ma. And I'm afraid the last. Why should it be? Because there won't be a digger in Hope Town tomorrow, and we'll be out in the fields. So shall we. You know Stafford Parker always promised he'd set us up in business if a find was made. <laughs> Promises cost nothing. I believe we're going when we go. And that'll be first thing in the morning, Ma. Stafford! What's all this about the first thing in the morning? Better look sharp at the packing. We'll have to make an early start. This is going to be a man-sized trek. We want to get on the roads before they're crowded.
your fifth threat. I asked you only one question. Are you going to allow Stafford Barker to push you around just because a native chief says he can? He says you must pay 10 shillings each for your claims. Why? They are not his. This is no man's land. What is going on out there? It's Muller. I've only been here two days and he's making trouble for Stafford already. I'm going to warn Stafford. Don't worry about him. He can look after himself. You get on with the unpacking. If you consent to take orders and buy claims from him, you are not men, but sheep. A yellow dog who ran from a fight. Yeah. You can take it from me. He means to set himself up as king of the pile and lord it over the lot of you. He's coming. Well, do you accept him as your lord and master? No. no. Good. I settle back once and for all. What's doing, boys? Taking the missing link back to the jungle? Get off that horse. I don't take orders from baboons. It's going the rounds, Mr. Parker, that you're aiming to set up as boss of this camp. Well, we're not over fond of bosses, see? Anyone who doesn't like it can quit. For like it or not, there's going to be law and order in Clip Drift. And the man who owns the territory has put me in charge to enforce it. And just a minute before you start something you'll be sorry for. Let me remind you there are 5,000 natives to every white in this district. And unless you pay for your claims and behave like gentlemen, you're going to wake up one of these mornings with an assegai between your shoulders. Get down and fight. Well, you asked for it. <laughs> Anyone else not sure who's boss here? Old for digging, aren't you? No, sir. At least I, I hope not, sir. As a matter of fact, I... I beg your pardon. I, I had a small patch at Clapham and I got many prizes for my run of beans. We fellow wants a claim. What do you say? Oh, I do hope you won't refuse me, sir. 
20 years ago, I promised Mrs. Pinto a diamond brooch. And although I've been a working jeweler all that time, I, I never earned enough to get her one. I mean, I promised my girl a diamond. I must do something about that. Yes, well, when I heard you were finding diamonds here, I... Let him I, have I, half a claim for five bob. Oh, thank you, sir, very much indeed. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Someone made an early find. Looks as though it's on your plate. I was having 40 winks when suddenly I felt something tickling my shoulder. <laughs> and blimey, if it wasn't this. You let them open it. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, no, it ain't mine. It ain't mine. I'm only working this claim for Captain Parker. Oh, oh, anyway, he deserves some luck. Well, boys, to us the next, eh? Yeah. Hello, boys. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Oh, What's going on? Nine carrots, if you ask me. Well, you're a ten, I'd say. Oh. Well done, Brandy. Good morning, Parker. Like to sell that stone? I have a use for it. My firm pays cash and gives the best prices to whites or blacks, eh, Muller? Oh. 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 I thought it was understood that no one bought from the blacks. Well, if it isn't, it had better be. Good morning. Mr. Pinto, you used to be a working jeweler. Ever try a hand at cutting a stone? Um, well, yes, yes. Good. Then you've got yourself a job. <laughs> Must I, Father? It's the law, Mary. They can't risk anyone spreading contagion within the camp. But surely a woman... Both male and female shall he put out. Without the camp shall he put them, that they defile not their camp. It's God's will, Mary. Yes. Hurry up. Others are waiting. <laughs> morning. Oh, good morning. You needn't bother with that. I'll get the doctor vaccinated privately. David! Yes, Stafford? David, show this gentleman where he can outspend him at his tent, will you? I'd be delighted. In the meantime, perhaps you'd accompany me on my stroll. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my opinion, laddies, you've seen the last of that particular entertainment. <laughs> no I never thought you'd remember me. I'd remember your face anywhere. What about telling me the name that goes with it? Hart. Mary Hart. I'll just call you Mary. Who are you? Staffer to you. Captain Parker to the rest of the camp. Oh, but you're not. I mean, I thought, well, I, I never expected. What am I not? And what didn't you expect? Oh, nothing, but people give you such a wrong idea of people. I see. Well, it'll be quite a novelty having the mission in the camp. Novelty? It makes it sound like some sort of entertainment. Isn't it? Don't you blow your bugles and bang your drums to attract the multitudes? To save them in spite of themselves? Isn't that why you came here? We came because Father was told that in Clip Drift, men had forgotten to praise God. Well, maybe they have. But Clip Drift's young yet. Men need roofs over their heads, beds to sleep in, fires to cook by, before they go to prayer meetings. Well, here we are. I thought we'd be more comfortable here than crowded in with the rest of the camp. Thank you, that'll be much nicer. Aren't you proud of being responsible for all this? Maybe, sometimes. Father, couldn't we give Captain Parker a cup of tea? Oh, he'd love that. He's a great one for tea. No, thanks, really. I have some work to do. Work on the Sabbath. It won't be blessed, my son. Who lives in that tent just there? Funnily enough, I do. Oh, that is funny, isn't it? Yeah, quite a coincidence. Well, I'll look back later, see how you're getting on. Better finish getting this tent up or you won't be settled in by nightfall. This place is growing. Issued more claims today than ever before. Yes, you can see it grow in strength, if not in beauty. Have a drink? No, thanks. Staff, the boys were talking about what you said to Muller this morning. Do you really think he's buying from the natives? He made his money selling rum to him. Yeah, that was different. The only difference is this is more profitable. Got a sweet voice that boy's got. Yeah. Funny the way he goes by here singing every day. Must be happy. Yes. I wonder why. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yeah, 
not good. You got something there, boss. Going to register it? And pay young Bloom a percentage, don't be silly. The way you run this stuff under Parker's nose beats me. That's what beats him. <laughs> Ian Blum must be getting rich. All their finding, I mean. And his percentage. I wish I was sure of that. What? That Ian Blum is getting a percentage in all their finding. Darn well he's not. Muller? I think so. Maybe others too. David, I'm going to stop this illicit diamond buying. It's the last thing I do. It's funny how that boy always sings when he goes up the street, never when he comes down. Perhaps his inspiration only runs from east to west. If you're going to play that thing, I'm going to run from east to west myself. <laughs> well, I've got to practice for the anniversary party. Boys and girls, as you all know, it's a year today since the captain here became boss of Clipdrift. He said then he'd make the town a paying proposition. And has he done it, boys? Has he done it? <laughs> So I give you the toast, and let's have it with musical honors of Captain Parker, King of the Val. <laughs> now, I don't want to make a speech, but there's one thing I want you to know. That today, the 1856th diamond was registered at my office. <laughs> What about all those that haven't been registered, eh? <laughs> no, let's keep the party clean. When the time comes, the boys who have not been registering them will get the shock of their lives. <laughs> now I call on Dora and the girls to give us a show. <laughs> Champagne, Ma. Oh, you will, will you? Sure, this course will be celebration. I am, as you know, a Madison Bell, who did captivate once the magnificent swell. He was envoy ambassador or something rare. To King what's his name? Oh, I do not know where. Was in Saratoga a year come next June And we walked and we talked by the light of the moon There was squeezing of hands followed by a big kiss And as far as I remember I felt just like this Up in a balloon, boys, up in a balloon All among the little stars sailing round the moon Up in a balloon, boys in a balloon. It's something very jolly to be up in a balloon. All together now. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. How did I go? You were wonderful. There isn't another girl in the world can come within a mile of you. Congratulations, Dora. You are great. Thank you, David. He's a sweet boy, David. He is. And a girl of sense would tell him so. 
No, what have I said? Nothing. I never will if I'm any judge. So that's how it is. You and I aren't the marrying type, Dora. Entitled to your own opinion? There's something here that might interest you. Stafford, how wonderful. Sorry I've been so long keeping my promise, but I don't get a lot of time for digging. You mean it's for me? Sure. Oh, Stafford. Hey, what's all the kissing for? Look what he's given me. Where shall I wear it? Here? No, no, put it on a chain or a pin or something. Otherwise, folks might think you're engaged. Hello, hello. Nice bit of glass. Dead spit of a ten character Mr. Muller bought. Very clever fellow, Mr. Muller. Yeah, oh, just... He talks too fight. much. Oh, who from? I didn't ask him. I am going for a walk. Something wrong with the knocker. I don't use them. Last night, Roger spoke of a ten character you bought. Who turned it up? I buy so many diamonds. But not of that size. What is the point of this question? In the last three weeks, no such stone has been registered. What I do with my own property is my affair. It's everyone's affair. I gave Jan Blum an undertaking that every stone honestly found would be registered. There's only one reason for not registering a stone, and that is that it was stolen. Careful what you say, Parker. Why? I've licked you with my fists, and I'll lick you a great deal easier with my head. Who turned up that ten character? Well? I have not admitted to possessing such a stone. All right. We'll see what Rogers has to say about it. You will not. He fell over a tent rope last night and broke his neck. Is that true? Unless you have some other explanation. You left the hotel just after him? Yeah. Have you? I was just wondering if it were a tent rope he tripped over, or his tongue. You haven't learned your lesson yet, Muller. Meaning? That every stone found here must be registered. Listen, Parker! There's no must about it. This is no man's land and no man's laws apply here yet. Not even yours. Then I'll call a meeting of diggers and make some laws that will apply. And by heaven, Muller, you'll obey them. that our trusty and well-beloved digger and brother, John Albert Rogers of Clipdrift, passed into eternal peace at an early hour this morning by falling over a tent rope while in his cups and breaking his neck, God rest his soul. Oh, yea, oh, yea, oh, yea. And know all diggers by these presents that a meeting will be held in Parker's Bar at 9 p.m. to discuss means for suppressing thefts of diamonds and the fixing of punishments for illicit buyers and other such like rogues. Oh, yay! We ought to stamp out diamond stealing and the illicit buying of stolen stones. We've got to have our own laws. Yeah. That's why I ask every digger to sign this book as a guarantee that he'll abide by our laws and help the court to enforce them. Yeah. There's a sweep for every man Jack assigns. Yeah. Boys, boys, 
We need a strong man to run this diamond city of ours. And I propose Stafford Parker as chairman of the court, Beak, and Lord Chief Justice all rolled into one. I have great pleasure in seconding that. Oh, well, then it's carried Nemcon, whatever that ruddy well means. <laughs> I'd like to propose Mr. Thunderbale for a seat on the bench. He was uh, quite a lawyer of repute before he uh, was struck off the rolls. <laughs> Matter of fact, gentlemen, I was never struck off the rolls. I left the country before the rumble me. <laughs> gentlemen, I would like to propose Hans Müller as public prosecutor. <laughs> Public executioner, more like, eh? <laughs> you can leave me out of this legal farce. Oh. You'll be able to judge how great a farce it is when we try our first case. Yeah. What is this? From Malefactor, sir. Erected by order of Captain Parker. I will not have this in front of my door. Take it away. Sorry, Mr. Miller, but the uprights are set in cement. Ah, finished, Tom? Yes, sir. Good. Let me have the keys, will you? In the lock, sir. Fine. Get yourself a drink in my office. Thank you, sir. What do you think of our new pillars, Muller? Thunder Bale was off putting them off the beaten track, but I said no. Put them where they'll be seen and act as a warning to all and sundry. No, I. I doubt if he's made these holes big enough. A man with a thick neck might find them rather a tight fit. Ah. Good morning. It is indeed. You're well, I hope? Yes, thank you. Of course, I needn't have asked. You're looking as pretty as a picture. How are you getting on in Cliff Drift? Oh, very well. We're going to hold our first meeting soon. Will you come? Well, right now, my hands are pretty full with this new Diggers Protective Association. I expect you've heard about it. No. What's it for? To protect them from gambling and drinking? <laughs> That's more in your line than mine. Father doesn't think so. He believes you possess an unlimited influence for good. So do I. So do I. In fact, this modest structure is one of the ways I'm setting about it. But aren't they pillories? Sure. We've no prison here, so I hit on this idea. It's for securing wrongdoers who are awaiting trial. But you're not serious. You couldn't be so cruel. Doesn't your father ever warn sinners about the punishment that awaits them? Of course. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. Come for a walk. I'll show you around. When I first came here, there was nothing but the felt and a few scrapings. It looks a bit different now, doesn't it? Have you always lived this sort of life? Camps and bars? No, I was at sea once in the Navy. I gave it up. Why? Well, it's not a story I'm proud of. Were you dismissed? I deserted. Oh. Oh, I was pretty young at the time and... Well, the details don't matter, but there was a big black mark against me. And in the Navy, that means you're finished. So I left the Navy. Wasn't that rather a cowardly thing to do? Maybe. I suppose I should have stayed and worked out my own salvation, as you say. Oh, it's not for me to judge. I, I had no right to say that. Oh, yes, you had every right. No, your life's your own, but... Must it be such a hard, brutal life? Have I seemed hard and brutal to you? If so, I'm sorry. I ought to be getting back. Father will be wondering what's happened to me. All right, I'll not keep you against your will. Father says, if you believe anything strongly enough, any miracle is possible. Well, what of it? I believe in you. The first diggers' court is now in session. Let all rogues and malefactors be arraigned before it. God save the Queen. Bring in the prisoner. Yeah. Oh.
you played that beautifully. Father, can't you persuade Mr. Raymond to play at our meetings? <laughs> no need for persuasion. I'd love to. What was that? It sounded like wild beasts. Uh, trying a kaffir who was caught with some stolen diamonds. What'll happen to him? Anything might. I was hiding behind my moat, Belinda, when I saw this negro meander-like among the diggings. Presently, another kaffir edges up, drops something in his coffee pail and makes off. Well, I can't follow both of them, so I creeps along in the wake of this here one. When he gets to the middle of the camp, he sets up all of the alleluja, like as if it was a signal for someone, see? Then me and my mate sets on him and finds the shiner at the bottom of his pail. You were carrying a diamond which you knew to have been stolen. Who did it belong to? You don't know. But you do know who was going to buy it. He won't speak. Well, we're waiting. Who was going to buy it? Turn around. See the man who was going to buy it sitting there, point him out to us. He's not here, Bas Parker. Man who buy, not here. Who's not here? What's his name? Tell us his name or it'll be the worst for you. Him, Bas Maxi. I mean to take the law into their own hands, Captain. Come on, then. Tap him in the pillory. I'll sentence him later. Come on, before they start shooting. It is the verdict of this legal assembly, of which I am chairman, that you be expelled from Clipdrift and all territories under our jurisdiction, on pain of death. <laughs> Pitch him in the river, boys. We can't swim. That's his lookout. <laughs> Where have you been? At the heart camp. Yeah? Uh, Mary asked me to find out what all this row was about. Mary did? Yeah, her name's Mary. Well, I'll be passing their camp on the way back. I'll tell them. 
Oh. Seems to have been quite a party. Could have been better. How? Oh. I set a trap for a tiger and only caught one of the cubs. Good night. Good night. Stafford Parker treats his tribesmen. You know how it is. Men are like kids. They love a bonfire and kicking up a row. You don't have to worry about a bit of shouting and horseplay. Thank you for saying that. Yes, indeed. From here, it sounded like a mob out of hand. No, everything was well in hand. Never more, sir. Tonight, we laid the foundations of real law and order in Pitdrift and burnt a few offerings to celebrate it. How many lumps of sugar do you like in your cocoa? Well, now, what do you suggest? I uh, don't really know very much about cocoa. Thanks. Mm. Not bad. Well, what do you think of my kingdom, Mary? In some ways, I love it. It's so alive. Do you find the diggers drink to excess? My point of view, as owner of the largest bar, they could hardly do that. They drink all they can get. Wine is a mocker, Captain Parker. But like many other things the civilized world looks down on, it brings a great deal of pleasure. There are higher aims in life than pleasure. Yeah, maybe so. But I tell you, he's trying to steal the last of your power. He's trying to become a dictator. I cannot believe that. Was it not by his orders that one of your own tribesmen was shot in the stocks? What will the rest of them think if their chief does nothing about a crime like that? If Stafford Parker ill treats any of my tribesmen, I'll take the concession away from him. He does ill treat them. I've seen him. I'm sorry now I didn't accept Herr Muller's offer. It still stands, Uncle. It still stands. But he might be spending his money on nothing. How is that? Soon the diamond fields will be given to the British or the Boers. I heard it today. Then why not accept Miller's offer now, before the news reaches him? And share the money with you, I suppose. Well, Uncle, not share, but... Ah, you would cheat your own mother. Make a big pause to yourself. What's the matter? Jealous of the girl in the Pope bonnet, eh? Oh, please, Mr. Parker, do not let them vaccinate me. <laughs> Good morning. Why, hello. You're an early bird. I like getting up early. Why, these socks are terrible. <laughs> Is there no one to mend them for you? I don't know. I baited this line to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Why, hello, Dora. So you're the modest violet who wouldn't be vaccinated. I beg your pardon? Granted, this time. But who are you? Bracken's the name. Dora Bracken. And next time you start poaching on my preserves, you'd better remember it, or you'll be sorry. But I don't even know you. You don't need to. I just came to warn you, that's all. Warn me? Yes. And you needn't look so innocent, either. It won't wash with me. Ever since you came into this camp, you've been making up to Stafford Parker. Well, if I catch you at it again, I'll have something to say about it. And, uh, I talk with both hands. See? <laughs> is she mad? Well, love's a form of madness. And is she in love? Yes, yeah, she's got it bad for Stafford Parker. But surely you wouldn't care for... He was here last night, you know. Yes, I know, after they burnt down Max's place. What? They burnt down a man's house last night? Well, didn't Staff tell you? He was going to. No, he... Excuse me. Yes? Why, Mary. And you, sir. Well, this is a pleasure. Sit down. Oh, well, you have it? No, but of course you don't. 
Well, what can I do for you? Last night, a Kaffir was shot and killed in the pillory. Well? I want your leave to give the body Christian burial and to speak at the graveside of the evils of passion and violence. Mr. Hart, I don't know who was guilty of this shooting, and no one regrets it more than I do. But the victim was a thief who got what was coming to him. If you want to preach, there's your moral. But his death wasn't all. Other horrible things happened last night, things you did say. Justice may seem horrible when you don't understand. Burning a man's house isn't justice. It's mob rule. Mr. Hart, in this camp you'll find the roughest elements on earth. Why do you think I could keep order by just saying, now, now, and reading the Psalms? But if you appeal to the spirit... I'd be laughed out of Africa. You deal with men as you'd like them to be. I deal with them as they are. But you're strong enough to lead by precept rather than violence. You wouldn't say so if you saw the riffraff that props up my bar every night. Take a look at them before you talk of precept. Very well, we will. Now, just a minute. My bar's no place for innocence. Then why not do away with it? Aren't you forgetting who's in charge here? How could we? Since he is in charge everywhere, however much the deaf and the blind may seek to deny him. Come, Mary. Captain Parker. Captain Parker, sir, look, look. I found a diamond. So you see, I, I can send my wife that brooch after all. <laughs> and, and I'll write saying it was all your doing and that, and that I think you're, you're the finest man alive. Really, you couldn't have said that a minute ago. Might have done me a bit of good. If Parker thinks I'm afraid of his pillories, he's wrong. There are still plenty of men in Kipdrift who will do what I tell them. Yes. Yes. Why not break up the pillories tonight? Not yet. I have a better idea. Let Parker have his court and his pillories. We will break up his meeting, huh? Yes, yes. that's it. No problem. <laughs> sitting in five minutes. Shall I tell them you're otherwise engaged? Oh, my brothers and sisters, how can drinking bars and gambling dens compare with lifting up our hearts and voices in praise of God? Some may think diamonds shine brightly, but their luster is dull compared to the light in the eyes of those who have found salvation. What's this? I didn't ask for that. Go on, take it. I don't know what's the matter with you these days. You seem to have forgotten how to smile. What do you want me to do? Go around grinning like a Cheshire cat? Better that than looking like the plumes on a hearse. Here, I got something to show you. Nice, isn't it? Oh, good, Dora. I'm not a marrying man. Maybe you'd like me better if I wore a Pope bonnet. Well, there's just time for a drink before the court sits. Whisk you around, Dora. Oh, help yourselves. <laughs> have you anything to say before I pass sentence? Next bus. They may have nothing to say. I have. <laughs> On behalf of Jan Blum, I declare that this court has no jurisdiction over any man, white or black. It is nothing more nor less than a vagabond court. You dare to call this a vagabond court? But I tell you that we diggers acknowledge no higher authority under heaven. If you are not sheep, you will show this clown what you think of him. Faces. Hurry! 
see. Come on, girls, keep it going. You see this ring, don't you? Well, he gave it me, the man you're trying to get for yourself. You see it, don't you? Well, now you can feel it. Don't cry. Black eyes and black looks don't last forever. Oh, I'm so ashamed. Ashamed? <laughs> By clip drift standard, you made a fine showing for an amateur. I oughtn't to have let myself care. But ever since we came, she's undermined everything Father and I were trying to do for him. She has, eh? He came to our meeting of his own free will and she dragged him away. <laughs> Perhaps she didn't share your opinion that Stafford Parker needed converting. Oh, she's wicked. She's bad. I suppose it's true they are engaged to be married. If it is, it's the first I've heard of it. But she showed me the ring. She hit me with it. You saw. Mary, is there a personal reason why Stafford Parker's salvation means more to you than any other man's? Of course not. I've got a reason for asking. Are you in love with him? How could I be when nearly everything he does is wrong? But ever since we first met, I felt I had a duty towards him to try and help him. I see. This? Why? Because the wrong person's wearing it. I'm right, aren't I? Or are you afraid to admit you're in love with her? Much good it'd do me if I were now. Ah, oh, tripe. She'd jump at the chance of getting you. Don't be a fool, Dora. You're the fool. I know what I'm talking about. Though I wouldn't have said so before she took a sock at me. After that, I knew it was all over. So now, if you've any sense, you'll take the crepe out of your hat, walk in, and stake your claim. You're a good sort, Dora. I was never sure of that than now. Listen, big heart. You're the only man I ever really wanted. And I'm giving you away to a kid who'll make you darned unhappy. Get out of here before I change my mind. Morning. Father isn't here, I'm afraid. That's all right. It's you I want to talk to. You mind if I sit down? Mary, I. Mary, do you honestly think it's possible to uh, change a man's whole nature, his character, his way of life? Of course I do. If a man... You think I'm a pretty rough customer, don't you? Hard and brutal. You said that once. Do you think you could change a man like me? Oh, but I didn't say that I could. But if a man has faith... I got faith in you, Mary. All the faith in the world. I love you, Mary, and I need you. Oh, I couldn't ask you to marry a man like I am, but... Couldn't you marry a man like I could be? Like you could make me? I'd do anything you tell me. I'd, I'd be anything you want me to be, but... Well, I... just don't think I could go on living without you. Well, I... 
Well, I won't ask you to tell me now, Mary. You want to think about it. Take your time. And when you state your terms, I'll meet them. Every one of them. But remember, I can't go on without you. But don't you see he means to put an end to your authority and set himself up as chief? He cannot do that. He is my agent. He was your agent, Uncle. But Mr. Park has grown too big for that. He wants to rule now all by himself. King Stafford. Now, if you were to hand over the concession to me, I would safeguard your interests. Parker is no longer reliable. What if he will not give up the concession? You have the means to make him. And if there should be fighting? Are your people afraid to fight? No. The Greek was never afraid to fight. If this man Parker defies our chief, then we will fight. Very well, Herr Miller. The concession is yours. And if Stafford Parker does not agree, we fight. Good. <laughs> Today, Clipdrift has got to make up its mind about its future. We're a big community, and we're growing bigger. Yeah. Yeah. We need laws, administration, order, everything that a well-run community needs anywhere in the world. <laughs> the time for an informal diggers committee has passed. We're too big for that. What we need is a constitution sanctioned by the people, supported by the people, respected and obeyed by the people. <laughs> Mark you. Mark you, it's no good fooling ourselves. Sooner or later, one of the big powers will step in and take control. Now, why should they? Yes, it's our it? town, we made it. It's not my town. All right, no right at all. Don't you worry, they'll do it. And they'll make a better job of it than we shall. Because neither the Boers nor the British are amateurs at it, like us. But it may be years before they do annex us. And in the meantime... We want our own republic. Yes, <laughs> If we declare in favor of a republic, can we have you as president? Ah. No. That's, that's for you to decide, not me. Oh, oh it's decided. <laughs> What's this? Has the circus come to town? <laughs> Captain Parker, you will cease to be my agent. In future, Herr Muller will handle the concession. Jan Bloom, you're not talking to a handful of diggers who have to be polite in case you turn your spears against them. We've grown into a strong, two-fisted community. And no petty chief is going to impose his will upon us. <laughs> You signed a contract with me. And as long as you behave yourself, I'll keep my part of it. But if you don't, wait. I... And, and one other thing. If ever you should be mad enough to send your impers against us, let me remind you that the British or the Boers, or both, will pour in men and guns and blow you to smithereens. Now get out. The next time you come, come in better company. The next time we come will be the last thing you see on Earth. <laughs> Brandy, follow Muller and see what he's up to. Right. Look a fool before my people. You should have known Parker would defy me. Defy? With every card in your hand, you fall for a bluff like that? It was no bluff. What he said was true. My advice to you is make peace with him. If you are afraid to fight, I will fight without you. 
There are plenty of men in Clip Drift who are tired of living under the thumb of Parker. And when we are on top, Yen Bloom, we will know our friends and our enemies and treat them accordingly. Good morning, David. I brought back the socks I darned. Oh. Thanks. Come in handy where I'm going. Where's that? Leidenberg. But you're doing so well here. When are you going? I promised staff I'd wait to see this Republic business through. That'll be any moment now. Why are you going? Life will be a lot easier when I don't keep seeing you around. David. Listen, Mary. Stafford Park has been a good friend to me. None better. Making sheep's eyes of the girl he loves isn't the best way of paying that debt. Thanks for the socks. Goodbye. But... Goodbye, Mary. talking to David. He's going away. Yes, we'll miss him. Mary, this Republic idea looks like going through. Some of the boys want me to stand for president. Will you? Well, that's up to you. Do you mind being the president's wife? Well, Stafford, I, I haven't really made up my mind yet. Well, isn't it about time you did? It's so difficult. Things like gambling and drink. Mary, I haven't had a drink since I asked you to marry me. Then you'd be willing to close that dreadful bar? No. If you insist, I'll give up ownership. But I'll not close it. It's the center of our life here, and it affords a living for some good friends of mine. But can't you see that it's wicked and vicious? Mary, I love you. I'll make pretty well any sacrifices you demand. But I will not impose your prejudices on other people. Prejudices? Can't you understand the difference between right and wrong? Can't you ever come out of that pulpit and be a human being? I don't know what you mean. Stafford! Stafford! Muller's out to make trouble. He's mustered a bunch of bad men and he's going to attack the camp at dawn tomorrow. Oh, he is, is he? Ride straight back to headquarters. Tell them to round up all the women and children in the outlying districts and bring them into the middle of the camp. Right. Come on, Yo. Come on. You and your father better get your things together and come back into the main camp. What? I heard that you were making bandages and hoped you'd let me help. All right. Sit down. See what you can do with Aunt Aminda's nighty. <laughs> oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yay! And know ye that at 7 p.m. this evening, by an overwhelming vote, this community declared itself the first diggers republic. Yeah! Pull down that ruddy flag, a nice and new one. Stafford Parker has been elected Good president! Yeah! Men 
of the first diamond field horse. Information has reached me that the force under Muller's command is planning to attack at dawn. He's been relying on Jan Blum's people to back him up. But Jan Blum has thought better of it, which is lucky for us, but we wouldn't have had a chance. As it is, we've a darn good one. Now, last time I fought Muller, I won because I kicked him in the face before he got going. Well, that's exactly what I mean to do again. Now, men, you know your orders. No bloodshed if it can be avoided. Just lay into them. And here we go. How many? We are about 300. Good. You think he'll stay and fight it out in the camp? Why else did he put up the barricades? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll be glad when it's all over. You see any movement, David? No, not a sign. They must all be asleep. It's a pity to wake the beauties, isn't it? Come on, then, let's go. And leave Muller to me.
Morning, Doc. Good morning. How are the casualties? Oh, nothing really serious. What about David? Going on fine. He'll be up in a couple of days. Good. I'll go in to see him. Well, I wouldn't. If, not just yet, if you don't mind. Well, if he's going to be up in a couple of days, he's fit enough to have visitors. Yes, he's fit enough. That's the trouble. There's someone with him. That did it. She was all over him when they brought him in, crying and fussing. You know what lasses are. Yeah, sure. Give me a drink, will you, Dora? What's the matter with you? you look as if you'd just seen your best friend, Pong. On the contrary, my best friend's very happy right now. So I'll drink to his happiness. David and Mary. Long life and happiness. That's the way of it. Have another one. On me. You're a good sort, Dora. But just not good enough, huh? Oh, well. Oh, I forgot. There's a gentleman over there looking for you. You wanted to see me, sir? Mr. Parker. Yes. My name is Longdon, sir. How do you do? How do you do? I've uh, been instructed by Her Britannic Majesty's government to hand you this letter. <laughs> You've seen that the arbitration committee has awarded these diamond fields to Great Britain. And in due course, they'll be annexed to Cape Colony. Sure, that's what it says. Ours will be the shortest lived republic in history. We, uh, we should like the annexation to take place tomorrow, if that's convenient. Hmm? Yes, I imagine it would be. Unfortunately, I shan't be here to hand over in person. You're leaving, Captain? Yes. Oh, I hope. Forgive me if I'm being indiscreet, but uh, I trust that your decision has no connection with past differences of opinion between yourself and the naval authorities. <laughs> Most tactfully put, Mr. Longdon. No, I'm not getting out as a deserter on the run. Gold has been found in the Leinenberg Mountains. I've been itching to go since I heard of it. You're a most unusual man, Mr. Parker. Pleasure to have made your acquaintance. Sir. Goodbye. You mean you're really giving up all this? Well, you know how it is. I was always more of a pioneer than a settler. Take me with you. I've got a better idea than that. I'm going to make over the bar to you and your mother. In a few years' time, you should be rich enough to pick a husband worth having. I don't want the bar, and I don't want money. I want you. Yeah. My sort gets along better alone, Dora. I'd uh, like you to keep this diamond I gave you. And this one to go with it. You meant it for her, didn't you? No, of course not. And? By these presents and the authority vested in us, we do hereby proclaim and declare these territories to be part of Her Britannic Majesty's domain in South Africa. We, we want Stafford Park! <laughs> Your late president has asked me to speak a word of farewell on his behalf and to express his hope that you will live long and happily under the British flag and uh, keep your tails up. <laughs>